more to be desired either than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the heart. All right, praise the Lord. I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the Holy Ghost Forum. Uh, you may have noticed we're here on a Tuesday morning instead of a Tuesday evening, so we're going to see how this uh, uh, works a little bit. If, uh, if you're with us, make a comment. Uh, uh, Phil and Candy. Candy, there should be sound now. Just let us know that um, if you can. Um, we didn't have any sound with the intro, but uh, there should be sound now. So, praise the Lord. It's February, the second Tuesday, and we're going to start meeting in the mornings uh, right around 10 o'clock. Ten, uh, We just started at 10.15 here, so we'll go for a couple of, uh, couple of hours, have a break, and uh, go from there. But uh, to start out here, let's just worship the Lord a few moments. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just lift up your voice if praise. you're there at home or wherever praise you're watching. Praise. Uh, uh, just worship the Lord with us. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, thank you, Lord. We thank you, thank you, Lord. We thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory God, to you. God, you're so good. Yes, Lord. God, you're so good. Praise you, Jesus. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shaholi ande do do la maiste chahali atoma. Makia yastolo oma amachela oma la tevo rusalaka. Uh, for this is a day that I've made for you, saith God. So walk in that day and, and enjoy the victory of that day. Enjoy the love and the peace of that day. For this day I've made for you to walk in and to walk in a victorious manner. I heard this while we were worshiping. To hear the tongues and the interpretation of tongues, make no mistake, identifies the moving in the Spirit in my people. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The move of the Spirit, the gift of tongues. Uh, John and I, he called me uh, <coughs> what, about 10 o'clock, something like that? Mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. You were probably sleeping. I was reading and sleeping. <laughs> At the same time, <laughs> sorry, you fall off to sleep and then read a little bit. And Put that book right across your face. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, a uh, something you brought up that that's kind of a common uh, issue. A couple of things. Um, the first thing for people to be bold to pray, to pray out loud, to be bold to confess. I think one thing the devil. Uh, works overtime on is keeping Christians from speaking their faith uh, and to the point of even praying in tongues. Uh, it seems like there was a time in my history uh, when I was young uh, in charismatic meetings and full gospel churches that you would attend, that I attended, uh, if everybody, there'd be times in the service, everybody lift up their voice and begin to worship God in tongues, in the Spirit. Amen. And uh, it seems like, uh, I've done this in other churches where I've traveled, we've done it in our home church, um, but it seems like people 
constantly need to be stirred up to be bold, yes. to be courageous, just simply to speak the word and to speak with other tongues. And so, uh, you know, I encourage you, if you're walking, uh, watching, uh, be bold to pray in the Spirit. And not just, uh, you know, I pray a lot in the, the Spirit under my breath. Uh, you know, the Bible, <coughs> the Bible says you can pray to yourself and to God. Um, actually, the way it words it, in 1 Corinthians 14 and 28, he says, <clears throat> if there be no interpreter, he's talking about in the church, if there be no interpreter, let him speak to himself and to God. Uh, yeah, Katie. I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, go ahead. Pastor Rutter, um, last week you said, take 20 minutes and pray in tongues and sit there with the notebook. And then do another 20 and another 20. I'm going to tell you something. That's a very powerful... It's not that I never prayed in tongues, but it's like that was a, you know, like sit there with your notebook. Anyway, anyway, it, God's blessed that. It's, I think it's a great thing. Like you said, pray to yourself, pray to God with tongues, you know. Yeah. Well, what I was saying was we can pray quietly under our breath and it's still praying whether you're shouting the tongue or whether you're praying quietly but there's something to be said uh, for bold words and speaking out boldly and not being ashamed uh, to pray in tongues or pray in the spirit how um, uh, I think it was Job he said how forceful are right words you know, so to speak the right thing, uh, to speak that right thing consistently, and to speak that right thing boldly. Uh, that's what, as Christians, that's how we need to go through our day. You know, we need to look in the mirror. I, I just read something recently about talking to yourself in the mirror, that it can bring yes. great confidence. Um, you didn't know that? No, I didn't really? know that. Well, I, I'd never, I have done it. Well, I'm but, always talking to myself in the mirror. That's, that's, that's one thing. I told you, uh, like... It's probably hard to find someone to talk to as handsome as you are. This, so. this is true. But, intelligent, um, yeah. And that intelligence. That's, that's yeah. the most important part. But, uh, you, you know, I've done that uh, for years. In fact, that's when, that's when he speaks to me quite a bit. You know, like, I'll be looking, and I'll be looking in my eyes, and... And then, you know, when this happened, this incident that happened in my life, I found that I could, I had a hard time looking like I used to do in that same perspective. And I, I hated that. I wanted to, I, I wanted that back, you know, but it was hard to come to grips with, for, I don't know why, you know, I don't know whether it was that I had, uh, that I had, uh, you know, not totally come to grips with the with the, the the idea that you know I was by myself. You know, but you're really not by yourself. Yeah. You know, and one that, thing uh, Lester Summerall said about <coughs> speaking forcefully is, and Wigglesworth said that too. He made a statement about about that. But uh, Summerall, in his teaching on casting out devils, he said you you, you need to talk with confidence. You need to speak with boldness and uh, let the devil know you mean business. Absolutely. And uh, there's a story told about Wigglesworth who's standing at a bus station and he watched a woman come with her little dog uh, to the station and <laughs> she starts out saying, now go home, mommy has to get on the bus. Go home now, go home. And the dog just kind of continued to, to uh, cuddle up to her. And, and then finally the bus pulled up and she says she stomped her foot and said, Go home! And, and the dog turned around, scattled, uh, skedaddled down the, the sidewalk. But uh, uh, we need to keep that in mind when we're living our life. If yes. we want to live victorious, if we want to live on the... Uh, you know, we, we just don't need to lie down and roll over every time the devil says, Well, this is what I'm going to do to you. And you have to turn around and say, No, devil. 
this is what you're going to do, and this is what I'm going to do today in the name of Jesus. Um, we were talking about Ted Shuttlesworth earlier, and he gave the testimony when he was with R. W. Schambach. Mm -hmm. uh, he came to him before the meeting. He said, tonight, we're going to line everyone up across the front that has uh, whatever what was blind or something he says every one of them are going to come up front we're going to line them up and we're going to heal every single one of them mm. and he thought wait a minute i thought jesus determined who got healed and didn't yeah but he kept his mouth shut and they brought everybody up blind and lined them up across the front every single person got their sight back praise yeah. god that and if you notice the bold men of god seem to get the biggest results yeah yeah there's something about being bold and being and and that's something we ought to learn in a church service uh we learn that through a time we can learn that through worship we can learn that uh through hearing the preacher but also when we give a tongue in a church service it ought to be with boldness and with confidence what is um, boldness <coughs> it's well, I think it's speaking with confidence or to be... Uh, uh, a lot of people think it's loud. Yeah, it's not necessarily loud, is it? I don't but, think so. But, but confidence uh, would be something in there with boldness. Yeah, you have to know. And uh, here, here's what Job said. Uh, I actually preached a message along this line uh, about... Uh, um, just three things on how to speak. I forget what the title of my message was, but in Job 6.25 he says, uh, How forcible are right words, but what what doth your arguing repro uh, reprove? So uh, it's good to speak. Uh, we, we need to know that we're speaking the right thing. And, of course, what is the right thing? The Scripture, the Bible is the right thing thing well, and uh, once we find out what what's that th what we're speaking is right we need to speak it consistently right and what we speak consistently or you know hold fast our confession which is hold fast to saying the same thing <clears throat> and then we need to go on and, and speak it boldly speak it with boldness when we uh, graduated from Raymond Bible Training Center brother Hagen told us that if there was one thing that he could impart to the people before they left, he said, it would be boldness. Mm. I thought that was pretty significant. That I yeah. said, if he only could get one thing into you, that that would be it. Well, you think about the prophets of old, and I think, uh, I even think about times that the Lord has spoken to me to, uh, to say something to someone. Um, it requires boldness. It requires, I guess, uh, uh, there's a couple of elements. Confidence would be part of it. Courage would be uh, part of it, to speak with courage. Well, I'm reading a book on the prophetic. Uh, the pastor gave it to me where I'm going to church, and uh, this guy, I mean, he, he's been doing it for years, and he went to lunch. He got invited to lunch with this big business I had like five businesses and uh, the Lord told him tell him uh, he's going to get wealthy on something in regards to his magnetic company mm. and he, and he, this guy said really you know because this guy was a noted businessman wealthy and he got invited there he said he didn't even know what he got invited there for yeah. but he went this guy's in California anyhow um this book is, I, I told you, you should get it. Yeah. But um, he said that he told, he, 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 you know, the Lord told him, go ahead, tell him. And he, he said, he, you know, he didn't really want to tell him. He said, uh, I just want to tell you, you're going to get rich on ma uh, something in regards to mag magnets. magnets. Huh. And, and, and so this guy says to him, you know, he, you know, he said it took a lot of guts for him to say that to him. And, and, and there's a bunch of other businessmen there at this around this table, beautiful place that he was invited to eat. Anyhow, th this guy said, you know, it's funny you mention it. He said, because I have a business that I was thinking about selling. Uh. 
But uh, now that you mention that, I think I'll hang on to it. So anyhow, uh, he saw him a couple, maybe three years later, got invited again by this guy. The limo came, picked him up. Wealthy. I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, he, he said you could smell money in the place, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> he said when he went back to lunch, and this was a really fine place, he said, you know, it's, he talks about it in the book, and he, and he went to lunch with this guy, and he told him that their, their company built some kind of engine with a magneto in it that is, mm. they're selling it around the, uh, you know, I call it the earth rather than yeah. the world, but anyhow. Uh, well, the Bible uses world, world yeah, is well, nothing that's, wrong with yeah, that. Well, the, I'm just world saying. doesn't have to be round. Exactly. So anyhow, he, you know, he um, told him that he was so glad that he didn't get rid of this business because he made a fortune on this engine that they came up with. Yeah. But uh, he, you know, it was because he, it was because he said that to yeah. him or he would have sold the business. We, we need to be bold in the things we say. In fact, I, I've had things where the Lord spoke, spoken to me and I thought I better say it now or I won't have the courage to, yeah. That's right. <laughs> to say it later. Yeah. Uh, well, you I, may not have another opportunity to I say it. may not have another opportunity. I, uh, I told a pastor down in North Carolina one time, I said, you need to, uh, and I didn't know what was going on, but he, he'd had an offer for another church up in Michigan. And uh, he had about 100 people, something like that, maybe 70 or 80. Uh, and I gave him a word that said, God's going to grow this church. You need to be planted here and stay here. I, I forget what the word was, but whatever it was I said, he said, that's the reason they stayed. They stayed there. Instead of taking the offer in Michigan, they stayed. And I went back to preach for him. And he had, uh, he must have had 800 people in his church service. Um, he, uh, uh, I preached for him on Sunday morning and a Sunday, Sunday night. He kind of moved towards uh, um, kind of a seeker-sensitive kind of a thing, but God blessed him where he was at and really grew the, grew the church in a great way. Um, you know, uh, I was here Sunday. Uh, pastor allowed me to preach Sunday, and my pastor has the tendency to take you to the edge of the cliff, and you can either jump or fall off. You know. Yeah. But you're talking about this guy right yeah. here. Yeah. He'll, he'll put you in position of either be bold or you know back off. But he taught me how to be more bold in this manner. And he says, while we were taking communion, he told me, I want you to pray for everybody <clears throat> in person. But when I got in front of them, I didn't have anything to pray about, but it was like I had something to say to them. Mm -hmm. And every time I got in front of somebody, there was a word of edification and exhortation. Yeah. And, but if I would have backed off, it would have shut down. Yeah. But if you'll just listen to the man in charge to say because he's listening to God and that just that little wee bit of boldness sure will take you down the road yeah especially in the realm of prophecy you've got to have boldness yeah. and uh, confidence to to speak a word that's what uh, an utterance in tongues is an act of faith that places a demand up until that there's no demand made yeah. But when that tongue is given, the demand is made for an interpretation of prophecy. Mm. If you don't place a demand, you don't get the prophecy. Yeah. It's just left undone. Yeah. And the faith across the board, I think, is like that. It places a demand on what you cannot see, but what you believe. I want to... I visited, I've been visiting, I've visited a number of churches in, in, in Pennsylvania and in Texas. And what I find is, uh, you, 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 and, and I've even gone to the pastor and asked him if there was an interpreter, but uh, they're, they're very, um, now, now the, the church where I'm going to right now, I have to give the pastor credit there. He's doing an empowerment course on Sunday nights 
uh, for the people to, you know, become more bold. I believe that's what he's looking for. Because even there, I don't see people, you know, stepping up to the plate. I call it, you know, Brother Hayes used to say, when you, when you get a chance to step up to the plate, make sure you knock the, try to knock the ball out of the park. Yeah. You know, and that's basically what boldness does for you. But the thing that I find is when you go into a place and you're new, the, I call it the, being the new kid on the block, you know, like a lot of times these people in these places, whether it be the pastor or whoever, they're all looking at you like, well, who do you think you are? Well, I don't think I'm anybody. All I know is you people need to be operating in the gifts. And, you know, I've had people say, what, what, what does that operating in the gifts mean? Well, just what I said. You're operating. You're you you're you're putting it into play. Whatever. What does operating mean? You know, like you're putting it into play. Well, you know, people aren't used to that kind of uh, rhetoric or whatever. You know, and I'm going. Well, they need to get used to it. You know, and I, and I believe that's what uh, uh, I was talking to Rob this morning about Jonathan. You know, he condescends a lot, and I and and now now that you mention it. You know, he is. He's he's slapping the church around a little bit to to wake them up. You know, people need to be uh, uh, awakened yeah. to the fact that God wants to enter into the into the ministry, wherever the ministry is, whether it be in Texas, whether it be in Pennsylvania, wherever God. I believe that uh, you know whether people like it or not. Whenever God sends me somewhere now, from now on, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bolt out there. With a tongue message, if I, if, you know, and they, we talked about it last night. You know, they have this thing that, uh, well, you know, uh, as, as the Spirit gives out, it's, it's almost like they're saying, <clears throat> when God gets a hold of your tongue, then you can give a tongue message. That's not what that's talking about. That's not what that, that's, that's not what that scripture is talking about at right. all. And, and even the preachers don't understand it. I don't know what school of theology or wherever they went to school. I've been in places where they went to Rhema. They don't teach that at Rhema. They don't teach it? They don't teach you how to move in tongues and prophecy. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you would think that they would. I don't Dr. think Hagen. it's a finished school. It's a, it's a starting school. Uh, Someone asked Dr. Hagen why he did not teach that the gifts of the spirit like that. And he said he really didn't have anybody qualified to actually really? do it properly. Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. Um, and I, I, I really, I'm, I'm thankful for dad Goodwin, J.R. Goodwin yep. and Joe Jordan, because they really brought this uh, truth to light. Um, well, uh, I'm well, not sure if this, uh, says it accurately, but I was looking up, uh, um, I was thinking about tongues in the church, and I was thinking about how important it is for us to be bold and to speak boldly, uh, either an utterance in tongues, because we were talking about this, you know, standing mm -hmm. up. We're not supposed to just wait for some feeling or goosebumps or some kind of a special anointing. The Bible says, if any man speak. If means there's a choice involved. Mm -hmm. You either can speak or you don't have to speak. But if you do, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, one after the other, and then let, uh, let one interpret. Well, and if there be no interpreter, verse 28 says, let him keep silence. Uh, and let him speak to himself and to God. Uh, I was thinking about uh, what Paul had to say about tongues and uh, where tongues ought to be spoken, because uh, a lot of a lot of people think that that uh, tongues. And John and I were talking about this because he he started praying in tongues real loud, and people thought, uh, oh, he's he wants to give a tongue, so we're not going to say anything. But he was just simply praying. In the church, yep, and expecting everybody else to pray. Yeah, okay. and First Corinthians fourteen allows for that. In fact, I was thinking, what what is Paul talking about here in chapter fourteen? Is he talking about 
tongues spoken anywhere, or what's he talking about? And when I looked up the word church and churches, uh, the word church is used seven times in chapter 14, and it's used uh, nine times if you add churches. So churches and church uh, is a total of nine times in 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, the whole book, it, it has 22. 22 times 1 Corinthians talks about the, uh, uses the word church. Mm -hmm. The only one that comes close to that is, uh, well, Acts, the book of Acts ties it with 22. And the book of Revelation has, uh, uses the word church 19 times. But there's no other chapter in the entire New Testament that uses the word church as much as 1 Corinthians 14. And the reason I mention that is we ought to be speaking in tongues in church because that's what Paul is dealing with in chapter 14. And he's telling us how to speak in tongues. He's telling us, He that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not unto men but unto God. Right there gives us a license to begin to pray in the church. Now, you can pray outside the church. But as I said, Paul mentions church nine times in this one chapter. And the reason he does mention it so often is because he's telling us how to operate, how to function right. inside the church walls. So he says we speak to men, uh, speak not to men but to God. Uh, because no man understands you when you're praying in tongues or speaking in tongues. Uh, Howbeit in the Spirit you speak mysteries. So as you speak out in tongues in a worship service, uh, you can go on down. Chapter 14 says we're giving thanks well. You're praying to God. What is it then? How is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. So he gives us all this uh, layout of and gives us reason to speak in tongues in a church service. And we're not even talking about interpretation of tongues and prophecy or um, um, tongues and interpretation of tongues. We're not talking about that. We're just simply talking about we ought to be praying in tongues in a church service. It's, it's legal to do that. It's right to do that. Even when someone doesn't understand you. Now Paul goes into, later on he says, uh, if I come to you speaking in tongues, or, uh, uh, well, in verse 6 he says, how shall it profit you except I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? Now he starts getting into the idea that... Uh, the tongue spoken in a public service can be for worship, can be for praise, can be to pray, because he already laid that out. We can do all that in the church or outside the church. But if you're in the church, there's opportunity to speak in tongues and have it be interpreted uh, in this way. You can speak by revelation, knowledge, prophecy, or doctrine. And then... Uh, this is where a lot of people miss it. I just want to share where some people miss it. Um, he tells us, uh, uh, in verse 18, he says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. So he's telling us that he prays a lot in tongues. He sings a lot in tongues. He, uh, he just speaks in tongues a lot. But then in the church... I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Now, a lot of people use that verse and they'll say, see there, <coughs> see there, Paul does not want us to speak in other tongues in the church. It's not what he said. What he said was, if I'm teaching you, I'd rather speak five words that you can understand. Right. Jesus loves you and me, five words. That's right. I'd rather tell you that than ramble on speaking to you 10,000 words in tongues. 
What he didn't say was that we shouldn't speak in tongues in church. He already laid out. Right. He already showed us uh, the benefit of praying in tongues. We speak mysteries to God. We edify well, ourselves. Well, see, see, when you're reading that yourself, like a, a person that's, you know, not a preacher, not a, 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 a theologian, or, yeah. you know. Or just a teacher to just, understand. That's right. You need someone to, you know, show you the way. Yeah. You know, because if you're just reading it yourself, it can be a little confusing. Right. You know, right. so. Well, that's so why that, it's so important that the word is rightly divided. Well, exactly. And that's why you go to church. And if you're going to a church, you need to go to a Pentecostal church. You need to go to a church filled with the Holy God. I don't want to say Pentecostal because there is a denomination of Pentecostals that I don't even know whether they're uh, preaching the, the right thing or not. I don't know. You yeah. know. I've never been in a Pentecostal church. So uh, all I'm saying is this. That you need to, if you're if you're going to a church that claims to believe in the gifts, and you don't see that happening in the service, it, it needs to be in the service. You know, somebody needs to be working, call it operating, call it whatever you want. You know, if you don't see that happening there, you need to find yourself another church. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's just that simple. You know, and I've had people say, uh, uh, "Well, you know," I said. Well, you know, did you have you had the hands laid on you? Oh yes, oh yes. And I said, uh, did they anoint you with oil? Oh yes, oh yes. Well, I said, uh, did you, did, you know? And there is something in regards to feeling. Yeah. You can feel. Nothing wrong with feeling. That's right. You can feel if there's I like an anointing. That's right. If there's an anointing there, you can usually feel it. Yeah. I, I, I when we, when we were in New Brighton. <coughs> As soon as I would walk through the door, and, and this is the thing about it, and, and I believe that this is the, one of the most important aspects of it, is if you're not, if you come through the church door not expecting, guess what? Probably won't get much. You're again. not going to get a whole lot. But if you come through the door expecting, if you come through, I'm talking about you as an individual. When you come through the door expecting, you're going to get it. You're going to get it whether, uh, I mean, and, and, and if you don't get it, that's what I'm saying. If it isn't happening, there, find another church. Yeah. Find another church. I, I mean, like I said, I've gone to numerous churches in, in, since I uh, haven't been preaching. And, and uh, I'll say that's another thing Shuttlesworth said. He said, if you're, if you're not preaching any longer for some reason, whatever, he said, you need to be sitting somewhere where somebody is preaching and listening to what they have to say, you know, because, uh, and, and whether, whether you, uh, agree or disagree, you need to be there. You need to be there listening. Sure. And, and I've been doing that. And, Amen. and, uh, you, oh. you know, uh, like I said, I was in a meeting last night and, uh, uh, the pastor was praying and I was praying in the spirit. And when I pray in the spirit, you know, I've always considered myself to be pretty bold. I didn't have to pray for it or anything. I just, it just came with the package, I guess, you know. <laughs> John the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, you know, like, uh, you, you, you know, praying in the spirit. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, I'm going, uh, uh, you know, because uh, uh, I was, you know, I got ears on both sides of my head, and I didn't hear anybody else praying in the spirit. And all of a sudden, the pastor quit praying, and I'm going, "What's going on here?" And I, I don't know whether I, I haven't talked to him. I don't know whether he thought I was going to bring forth a tongue message or what. But you know, in reality, after I thought about it, I should have. I should have. I should have yeah. brought something forth. Wouldn't you know? have been anything wrong with that. No, it would have been. Um, it was wide open. But. Uh, one thing we talked about is uh, it seems like in the church today, people are not comfortable just simply praying in the Spirit. And Paul lays out very clearly that this is something that's beneficial and something we can do inside the church and outside the right. church. But then he goes on talking about uh, clarity uh, and, and hearing clearly with understanding. He, uh, he talks about... Uh, instruments he said uh, in verse 7 and even things without life-giving sound whether pipe or harp 
except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? Uh, for if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle, to the battle? So likewise you, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For he shall speak into the air. So what he's telling us here, he, he starts to transition. He tells us all the benefits of what tongues will do and, and all the uh, inside, out, outside the church. But, uh, but then he starts to say, if we want to rally the troops, if we want to speak to people, they need to be clear as to what's being said. Yep. And in order to be clear as far as what's being said, there has to be an interpreter. So he goes on, he says, So likewise you, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For he shall speak into the air. Now apparently the Corinthians were speaking, they had an abundance of speaking in tongues, but they weren't applying it to the church service where they could get some clarity and some guidance and some understanding. And with that, you had to you had to have an interpreter. Right. You, you, there has to be an interpreter. He goes on. He says uh, there are it may be so many kinds of voices in the world, none none of them without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So, if all we're ever doing is speaking in tongues in a church service, there's never any understanding that's disseminated or comes across. Understanding and revelation only come with the interpreter. There has to be an interpreter to speak to people. But, again, going back to the first part of the chapter, if all you're doing is speaking to God, you're not speaking to men. You're speaking to God. Uh, you're speaking mysteries in the Spirit. You're edifying yourself. Um he goes on here in verse uh, 12, Even so ye, for, much, uh, for as much as you're zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. And if we read on in this chapter, to edify the church, you have to speak in a clearly understood language. And that's what the interpreter does. Wherefore, let him, verse 13, let him that speaketh an unknown tongue, Pray that he may interpret. Or we could just as easily say pray that an interpreter would be present. Right. Or pray that, uh, you know, get this thing in operation where we have uh, uh, where we have tongues and interpretation operating in the church. He says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, verse 14, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say, Amen, at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. So there is a benefit to praying in the Spirit and praying in the known language. Now, the fact that we know, well, well should we just do away with tongues all together since we need to have understanding in the church? No, because tongues brings edification to the person. You're praying, uh, you're giving thanks well. Uh, you're praying the perfect prayer to God. You're speaking mysteries to God. Plus, the Bible says, uh, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, forbid not to speak with tongues. Yep. And see, what a lot of churches have done because they haven't, rightly divided the word and understood Paul's talking about praying in tongues in the church, outside the church, and then he's talking about bringing clarity to the message. If you're speaking in the church, bring an interpreter, bring an, uh, uh, you know, an understanding. And, and in fact, you know, I wanted to mention this when you were speaking, John, but he's, he told us, he says that the things I write unto you after you just got this whole discourse done, about tongues in the church and prophecy. He says, The things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Uh, covet to prophesy. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. 
forbid not to speak with tongues. And then I, I love this because he finishes out this, this uh, section of what he's talking about. He says, let all things be done decently and in order. And, uh, you know, he lays it out so clearly how we ought to have tongues and interpretation in verses um, well, the other thing that 25 we through about, 28. The other thing that we talked about is, you know, this uh, control aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, I, saw it, I saw it at the conference down there in Texas, uh, the Copeland Ministries. You know, Brother Copeland, I love the guy. You know, if people want a bad rap him, whatever. Uh, they'll have to answer for that. But one thing that I noticed, and I know I've, I've noticed it in other places too. I noticed it in a couple of big churches in Texas. You know, when the preacher's preaching, they'll as they're preaching, they'll come forth with a tongue message, and they'll interpret it themselves. Well, that's control. That's a control <coughs> fact. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Right. I didn't say there was anything wrong. There's nothing wrong. You're right. But they're not allowing everybody they're not else. Letting to anybody, speak. They're no. not letting anybody else. It's, it's a body ministry. This, we're, Christ left the body here. We're the body. We're the body of Christ. So if it's a body ministry, how come uh, uh, these people think that only the preacher is 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 subject to doing the work? I'm what? trying to get my wife. Uh, to get bold enough to interrupt me in my uh, preaching with a tongue so that I can share, we can share what the Holy Ghost has to say. Right. Uh, Dad Goodwin used to do that all the time. But, but you so, know, if, if, if that were to happen in, in some <coughs> of these churches where they're supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and if I were to interrupt the preach, a lot of these, a lot of these ministries, they forgot the evangelist, they don't think they're uh, uh, prophets any longer. You know, yeah. it's it's the pastor, it's the pastor, it's the pastor. It's not just the pastor. It's not yeah, just the you, pastor. You've heard that some some people think the fivefold ministry is pastor, 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 pastor. pastor, 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 pastor. pastor. <laughs> well, and and I, there is a church uh, that I was going to. That he's a young preacher. He's a good preacher, good message. But but uh, uh, one guy that goes there, he says that. If, if you get bold, if somebody gets bold, right away the other people in the church get upset because you're you're taking the limelight. I, nobody wants a limelight anyhow. Right. One, well, of the, one of the greatest revivals of modern history, the leader sat on the platform with a bushel basket over his head and <laughs> yeah. just let it happen. Yeah, and uh, they had abundance of yeah. miracles, of signs and wonders, his job of was tongues to, and interpretation. Yeah, his job was to get out of the way. Yeah, I, uh, most pastors today are too insecure to allow anything like that. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're afraid of losing control, and a lot of them for some uh, maybe good reasons, and that there's people that get out of yeah. control. You know, but uh, but you know one reason for that, Gary. And keep your thought, but they haven't put any order in place to begin. They with. don't know. Uh, they don't understand this teaching. Right. Yeah. It all goes back to verse 1 in 1 Corinthians 12. God doesn't want you to be ignorant. Yeah. But if you're going to not study and show yourself to prove in chapter 14 and That's learning right. how to do it, yeah. you're going to be ignorant. And the thing about the church is, as the pastor goes, so goes the congregation. Yeah. So if he's going to be ignorant in this, they're going to be ignorant. Yeah. When you came to us six, seven years ago <coughs> and taught us First Corinthians 14, yeah. you brought us into an understanding and it agreed right yeah. here. And ever yeah, the truth then, has a way of ringing a bell in your spirit. Right. And it? ever since then, we found out what it meant to have a designated interpreter. That's right. Yeah. Which brought about tongues and interpretation. In fact, God talks about in his word, Work with those who you know. And that helps keep everything in order because you don't have somebody out there just spurting out prophecies and interpretations, and then you got to go back <coughs> later and correct them. Well, <coughs> traditionally, uh, and my understanding amongst uh, uh, 
Pentecostal church, now it may be in some churches, they know the one that's given the interpretation yeah. that he consistently or she consistently interprets. But most of what I've seen is where a pastor opens up the floor to the gifts to anybody and anything. But if he just simply do a brief reading right. of First Corinthians 14, especially verses... Uh, yeah. 26, 27, 28, uh, all the issues of order would be solved. I found that that basically doesn't work for the most part. What's that, care? <laughs> to teach on this and then expect people to be giving tongues and prophesying. People, well, they have to continue to be encouraged in it, for uh, sure. Well, I, I think you have to place it. I mean, uh, John talked about if you're coming into church with no expectation, then no is what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, we talked earlier, and Katie brought it up, uh, the exercise of speaking in tongues for 20 minutes with the pencil and paper, expecting to hear from God when you're done. Yeah. And uh, if you don't place the demand, nothing happens. Somebody has to move by faith. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> one time when you were here, when we were learning all of this, I think that's when it was. I said, if if you give a tongue, or if anybody gives a tongue, Pastor Rob will interpret. Yeah, and I started to sweat. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> By faith, I placed a demand. Yep. I knew the gift that was in the man. Yeah. Also, the other day we were having communion. He mentioned this earlier. I said, Pastor Rob, I want you to follow me. I'm I'm distributing the cup to the people. I said, I want you to follow me and pray for each one as I go. That placed a demand, an expectancy that God's going to do something. He's going to move prophetically. He's going to move inspirationally yeah. through a person, through the designated person. When you have a designated interpreter, there's an expectation that that person will indeed receive uh, the inspiration of whatever the tongue right. is. Yeah. Okay. I really think you have to put people in that position. Yeah. You have to That's good. call yeah. somebody out and say, you're going to give a tongue today. Yeah. You know, or And actually, Gary, there's nothing wrong with that. There's yeah, nothing unscriptural. Right. Because if you don't do that, everybody waits for somebody else to do that's it. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly it. Everybody's yeah. waiting on everybody else. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then nobody's going to do it. And yeah. the person on the other end, from my perspective, because when he does that, uh, it's like when he first said and said, whoever gives a tongue, Pastor Rob's going to interpret. Now, I... Literally, I felt sweat coming off me, but inside of me I said, okay, I will. The minute I said that, I stepped forward and God met that stepping forward. Mm -hmm. You got to, regardless of how you feel or what you think about yourself or anything around you, you got to say, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the demand that faith places is on God. Yeah. Well, how can you lose? That's right. You know what I mean? He's got the goods. He can deliver. Amen. That's where you want to put your faith. That's right. If we can understand I chapter 14, verse 27, where it says, if any man speak an unknown tongue, and then he gives us a limit of two people or three people, yeah. and let one in uh, interpret, one designated. But if, if we could get a hold of this, uh, if any man speak in tongues, it's not... It's not uh, if you feel the unction, if you feel anointed, it's just any man. No, it's right. it's what they it's what it, these two guys just said. When he said it, he said it. Yeah. What you said, what he said, is exactly what needs to be done. Yeah. You said and what you said is simply this. You you step forward, you said. Yeah. You're stepping out in faith. Yeah. And once you step out in faith, it's gonna happen. It's and it's faith. and it's exactly what you said. It's by faith, not it's by, by feeling. It's well, by know, faith. Yeah. You know something that Joe Jordan said that Dad Good would would often do. In fact, how he learned to give interpretations or give a tongue in a church service. Prior to the church service, Mom Goodwin come up to Joe and said, "Joe, uh, uh, I believe God's going to yeah. give you a tongue today," and just given him, like you said, that expectation. And the idea that he could give, he could give a tongue. You did the same thing, Gary. In uh, we were at some kind of golf course. Oh yeah, with, with uh, and 
we're all sitting up front and you said that everybody here in this line is going to give a tongue and you said Rob's going to interpret every one of them and I started thinking I hope there's somebody here named Rob <laughs> but each one I started just yeah. because okay by faith I'm you're just going to do it faith. Yeah. and I know that I stumbled through the yeah. first through two but then all of a sudden something went click yeah and it was like it's almost like you know the answer. Yeah. You know what you're saying is correct. And you're moving in that direction. And the more you do it, the more God starts is able to flow. Say that last sentence again. The more you do it, the more you uh, adapt to the flow of the Holy Ghost in you. If there's anything unique about what I'm bringing forth and what I've probably got more persecution and and uh, uh, just backlash about is that we ought to have tongues and interpretation every time we get together. Yes. Now, for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, uh, we want to hear from God every time we get together, uh, and we want to hear supernaturally. The second thing, for the benefit of those given a tongue and the interpreter, it gives him uh, an adeptness and... Uh, a quality it, it just uh, helps him to develop and, and, flow. The, and flow if if all you're ever doing is speaking in tongues or even even if you got this order down right it says we have one interpreter even if you have that order right and you're only doing it once every couple of months how in the world how on earth is anyone going to become adept or become well, uh, well so maybe, develop yeah, and of, given a tongue and interpretation. A lot of it is what I, I mentioned, and you and you put it on your hand. Bonnie, you were going to say something. Katie. Katie. I mean, Katie. Oh, okay. I didn't want to interrupt you. I just felt like the Lord wanted me to speak to you about Yep. Yeah. Well, go ahead and give a, come up here and grab a mic and just. Uh, okay, go first. We've got another chair over there. Yeah, you can sit right there. But verse verse 26 tells us, How is it then, brethren, when you come together? Every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Every time we get together, these ought to happen. Go ahead, Katie. I stand in my yaka. Loy my yana kishi. Oya bayasha kebe biyana my yaka shi. The maya kishen the mayata. Hoya 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 banaya kichi shame, hoya kame shate, hoya kame shate. For surely I would have you to know these things of my spirit. I would have you to understand these things of my spirit and to not be ignorant. So receive these teachings, receive my word, and know that these are the commandments of the Lord that I want my gifts in operation in the church. And I especially want the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues and prophecy to operate in the midst of my people. So I give you understanding this day of the things of my spirit. Amen. Thank you. You know, how many times have we walked away from a situation or a happening or somebody saying something and you feel like I knew it. I knew it. I knew it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, you did know it because God wanted you to give it, but you didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, tongues and interpretation is something that we can do on purpose. On purpose. On purpose. I commit myself to enough faith to give a tongue. On purpose, I give myself to have enough faith to interpret. What I'm doing, I'm trusting God that he's doing his part. And by reason of use, my strength grows. And this is the gateway, the doorway, the pre-qualification for the revelation gifts. Yeah. If you're obedient in this, you will begin to flow in revelation gifts instead of walking away saying, I knew that when somebody yeah. else says it. Yeah. You would have been the one that said it. No. The re when you begin to be obedient in the revelation gifts, that's the step into the power gifts. 
Yeah, then, then you know something and God does something at the same time. So it all has a sequence and an order, a divine order. And uh, the, until, until the church gets willing to step on the bottom rung, you're never going to get to the top. You know, it's like you've yeah. you got to do things the way God sets them up. You know what I was thinking, uh, how important and vital it is to... Uh, to give people an expectation and to stir them up in these things. You know, uh, very consistently, uh, nearly every Sunday service, we have at a minimum, we have at least two people give an utterance in tongues, but we never have the third. And so what I need to start doing is prior to the service is approaching at least one individual and saying, listen, you're full of the Holy Ghost, I believe God will use you in the gift of tongues if you'll step out. Will you do that? And just start encouraging people to step out. That's what Mom Goodwin did to Joe. Mm -hmm. And Joe, uh, she basically looked over at him. It was during the service. said, Joe, I believe God's given you a tongue. And uh, he went ahead and spoke it out kind of gingerly at first. Of course. And... Uh, and Dad Goodwin interpreted. Uh, the following Sunday, she said the same thing. Joe, I believe God's given you a tongue. And uh, he went ahead and stepped out and gave the tongue. He said, from that time forward, he never had to have anyone encourage him. Yeah. He just went ahead and stepped out uh, as he felt like uh, it was time to give know, a tongue. Paul never reprimanded the Corinthian church for speaking in tongues a lot. Right. He just said, we're, we just need to put it in order. Yeah, just place it in the right framework. Yeah, he didn't uh, say don't do right it. Framework. Right. And yeah. when you put it in the right framework, that opens up the next door for the Holy Ghost to right. do the next gift or whatever right. he wants to do. Right. And, and then, and then it, it, it will increase. Right. You know, it, that, you know God wants to increase. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want us to get stuck just on tongues. And interpret it. He wants us to move into word of knowledge. He wants us to move into word of wisdom. He wants us to, you know, move in in such a manner. And, and the thing about it is, what we're talking about. I, this book that I read, uh, he talks about the third heaven, talks about where we are, and then the second heaven. You know, where you, you know the principalities and powers are in the high places. That you, you know. And, and if we're all, all we're doing is, oper he says, it's, you know, either you're operating from earth to heaven or you need to be operating from heaven to earth. And, 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 and that's really what we're doing when we're doing, or, or we're, when we're, and I use the term operating in the gifts, that's what you're doing. You're operating, you know, from, heaven from the to heavenlies yeah. to, to the earth instead of letting the the things that are in the high places get away with what I mean just think about what the high places are doing to our country right now you know those principalities and powers in the high places are doing their thing they're getting away with murder yes and I'm talking about literally yes. I'm not talking about just that as a cliche mass they're murder. getting away with mass murder yes they, they are they they and that's what they love. They love that. Psychopath. You know, and, and, and then you have people that are here in this <laughs> realm where we are that are operating nothing but the natural. If you if you come at them with what we're talking and, and, and the sad thing about it is in the church it's going on. The yeah. church is letting them get away with murder. You know, nobody wants to talk about the murder that's going on. Nobody wants to, in you know, it's like, the, the, I saw a person last night, you know, he, he had a, he was like looking at me, and I looked right at him, like this, and and when people can't look you in the eye, you know something's going on, you know, I don't know what it is, I, I think I don't care to know what it is to tell you the truth, but but in reality, what it is is what they want to do is if you're operating what the way I'm saying, if you're operating from the heavenly. And bringing it to the earth, they don't want you to do that. Yeah. They want you to operate 
the way they operate. They want to keep God in the box. Yeah, they, yeah. that's exactly right. And, but see, the important thing is to the body of Christ, God gave this gift, a pastor. And the anointing of the pastor is to pastor, uh, shepherd a people supernaturally. Yeah. And you supernaturally, you get things from God, like that one thing a pastor should be is be able to interpret. That is supernatural to be able to do that. And you gotta, you got to learn the gift of interpretation and the flow of it. you got to learn the gift of tongues and the discerning of spirits. And to be able to supernaturally, you talked about the high place, I mean, you teach these people how to rise up in the spirit, and they go out and stand on a corner, corner and speak to these high places, pulling them down. That's right. That's what needs to be done. That's what a pastor does, supernaturally pastors. And you know, uh, Rob, if people will learn, and let's let's just say what it is, a church ought to be a place of learning, yeah. of discipleship, of, uh, of teaching, a place where we're taught and learned. And if we can learn to be bold here, how are we going to be bold outside if we can't first be bold yeah, in that, here? And that boldness comes from within. Yeah. Where the river wants to flow. Yeah. The river wants to come out. And too many, the problem is in the church, pastors, they have this job that they do. But they're not doing it as a gift that God gave right. to the body. Um, let me answer, since we're talking a lot about tongues and interpretation, how do we answer, and I don't care who answers it, um, but uh, oh, now wait a minute. Brother Bailey, um, some have the gift of tongues, but I don't have the gift of tongues. So I think we uh, have to talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's exactly right. That's ignorance. Right. Okay. So explain what you're saying here. You don't have the gift of tongues because you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, been filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. the reason. So well, a person not, has to first be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. not preached. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You know, there's a great void here. I never hear anybody preach. They're afraid to offend somebody. the baptism with yeah. the Holy Ghost. Okay. Um, let's say uh, you have the gift of tongues, but you, you the Bible still says, do all speak with tongues? Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all the workers of miracles? The answer to all those are no, 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 no. Do all speak with tongues? Now the answer is obviously no. So how do we answer that? Well, that's the that's the, the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. One of the nine gifts that's mentioned in chapter twelve. Right. That's not the uh, devotional tongue what we use to pray and worship. Okay. And uh, you know, give an utterance in a congregation. I would say that, and I would also say there's an office of an apostle. There's an office of a prophet. Are all prophets? Are all apostles? No, no. Do all work miracles? No. Do all uh, speak with tongues? There's an office. Right. There is a ministry office of tongues with interpretation. I believe, like you said, Rob, like a prophet will prophesy. An evangelist may work miracles. Right. A, uh, an apostle has signs and wonders. A pastor is going to have the gift of interpretation and possibly, along with his wife, have tongues and interpretation of tongues. And or the, someone else in the church. It could and the with. person that got baptized in the Holy Ghost is naturally going to speak in tongues. Yeah. Because it was a gift given. And when somebody gives me a gift, it's mine. Yeah. I can open it any time I want. Yeah. So that gift that he put inside of me in tongues, God said, is for me to pray, building myself up. So let's mystery. let's say this. Um, uh if, uh, verse 27 says, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three. That is not talking about a ministry of tongues. Right. It's not talking about the office of tongues and interpretation. That's talking about anyone in the congregation who's been baptized with the Holy Ghost and right. speaks in other tongues. Absolutely. That yeah. gift that public utterance is available to you, not 
not by special anointing or special gifting, not by uh, uh, being set apart to that office, simply because you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you ha with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you can stand up and partake of this ministry that he talks about in verse 27. And the same right. with prophecy. And the same with prophecy. Yeah. yeah. And you know, when you speak in time, when you pray in time. But it takes more faith with prophecy mm -hmm. if you speak. Can, 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 I, correct, just can, I, a can I bring a correction here? Yeah. That scripture that you are quoting are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? It doesn't say no. It doesn't say anything. He doesn't answer the question. He just asks the question. And, and in, in reality, you know, they don't have the gift of healing because nobody has ever taught them that if you have the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you got them all. Well, there is you a got good them all. point there. Well, I'm just saying. There are you, times you know, if I'm you're going to yield if, to the Holy Ghost, you can have if, all those available If we're available going to use to this scripture right here, we need to make people understand that just because Paul says, are all apostles, are all prophets, he doesn't say no. He doesn't say, and the answer to it is not no. Because what he's asking, he's he's doing what Jonathan Shuttlesworth was doing. He's slapping him up alongside the head and saying, hey, are all prophets? No. But he doesn't say no. But you can you can take that and go with it. But but you know, when it comes to the gifts, you have all of the once you're filled with the and I told somebody this this morning. Yeah. They said. They said to me. They said, uh, <clears throat> "Well, they're looking for tongues." I said, "Well, they're no they're looking for the wrong thing." I said because the thing that people need to be looking for is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because once you get the baptism, it makes in you the, available to all of them. It, all when the you when you need it, it, when you need it, you'll have it working. Yeah. You, if you if you're expecting that, if yeah. you're not expecting that, then you might not have any of them working, <laughs> for that matter. But but I, I know this one person that's listening right now. Uh, they go to a church where they think that it's happening. I don't think it's happening at all. You know, because I've been to that church. The preacher himself said one night when I was there, he was going, "I know somebody has. I know somebody has a message. I know somebody has a message." And I'm, so I'm sitting there waiting. I'm waiting for, you know, I'm the outsider again. I'm waiting for, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. So, and, and the guy was adamant about somebody having a message. Nobody was moving. I knew, and you know what? Spirit said, they ain't going to move. You got to do it. And I'm going, man, I just walked into this place. I don't really want to do it. He said, you got to. He wants it. You give it to him. And so I give it to him. And uh, I'm sitting there waiting. I give him a, give him a chance, you know, because nobody told me whether there was an interpreter or not. I just heard the voice say, give it to him. And so I gave him the message, because you always have a message, don't you? Yeah, you can, <laughs> and if you're listening to God. Exactly. You can have a God. message in your living room with your wife there, if, if, if it need be. You know, I, I think it. I think there has to be a need, you know, in most instances. But so I waited. Nobody, nobody interpreted. So I, I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not walking out of here until I interpret this thing, and I interpret it, yeah. and you know, right away the whole place it was like on fire, and everybody, hallelujah, 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 and I'm thinking to myself. Well, how come one of these people that are Hallelujah didn't give the message? Yeah. But they didn't. They haven't been taught. Well, that and the expectation. There's a lot of factors that come into it. Uh, I, I agree with you. You know, if you go down through that list, are all apostles, are all yeah. prophets? Uh, I believe you could answer that as no, because it's a limited number. But in one sense of the word. Uh, all those things we have access to. That's right. All those gifts, all those ministries. And that's ministries. what I think Paul was doing. And a lot of it has to do 
not a, you know, there are different callings and anointings, but a lot of it has to do with our personal hunger, our thirst, right. our expectation to press in. With that said, we're going to take a five, ten minute break and we'll be back for our second session. So don't go away. Tell someone about this uh, 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 on Facebook. Uh, uh, contact them. Let them know we're online. We're live. And uh, also, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, we want to hear them. So God bless you. We're going to take a short break. I can click the share button too. Yeah. Yeah. Sweeter also than honey and the honey. 